Hi, it's Jan Howe. Thanks for joining me for another quick and easy sewing project. If you have a baby shower to go to or just have a baby coming into your life, these baby blankets, these miter cornered self-binding baby blankets are so fun and quick and easy to make up. You just need a couple pieces of cute flannel print, one for the back and one for the front. You may think that these mitered corners look really tricky and complicated and hard to make, but they're really not. And I'm gonna show you step by step how easy it is to make. You can make one of these up in just a little bit over, just a little over 30 minutes. I like to make a few of these up, bundle them together for um, baby shower gifts. You find that after making up one, you can't wait to make up more. So be on the lookout for some cute flannel pieces and let's go over the items and things that you'll need. The materials and items you'll need to make your self-binding baby blanket are two pieces of fabric. You can use flannel, you can use other types of fabric, but I like to use flannel. And decide which piece you want to be the outside that you want to have be the binding. I'm going to choose this cute polka dot, pink polka dot piece for the binding and this for the front piece. You'll need 40 inches of the back piece and 30 inches square of the front piece. A rotary cutter and a rotary mat and a ruler is nice if you have one. If not, you can use scissors. Of course, some thread the same color as or close to the color of your fabric, a pair of scissors, straight pins, a pencil, two safety pins, and of course a sewing machine and a sewing machine needle. We're sewing on woven fabrics and to get a nice straight top stitch, I like to use a sharp needle or you can just use a universal needle. So let's gather up your goods and we'll get started. So to cut out the front and back pieces of your quilt fabric, you decide, of course you've decided which side you're going to use as the back and the binding edge. You can pre-wash your flannel fabric if you want to. I usually don't if I am giving it as a gift because sometimes when you pre-wash your fabric, it, it kind of loses that um, newness and it, it kind of tends to look like it's been used. So I, sometimes there'll be a little bit of shrinkage, but most likely your fabric, your flannel will shrink if it is going to at all, um, both pieces the same. So of my bag, decided to use this cute polka dot piece for the binding edge. And as you can see, when you, buy fabric depending on the per the clerk or the person that's getting your fabric ready sometimes your your edge is not going to be necessarily straight most likely not so you'll need to straighten off the edge and fold it correctly so sometimes it can be folded um, kind of crooked so how you do that is just lining up the salvaged edge which is the edge that has usually will have a little bit of printing on it and it's a tighter weave towards the edge. First off, let's just go ahead and square off one of the edges here and just line up the folded edge or the salvaged edge on this on a one of the lines there. I'm just going to line up the folded edge on this edge because it's closer to me. And if you don't have a cutting mat and a, and a rotary cutter, you can just use a table, a straight edge of a table or a big long ruler and to make sure the edges are straight and use um, another ruler to get that straight edge. So I'm going to come to this edge here and just square it off. I have a nice, good, clean edge to start with and work with. Then to get my length, I'm going to measure out 42 inches. 
And when I'm buying my flannel for my receiving blankets, I like to get another, an extra half of a yard to make some fun burp, burp cloths with it. And I have some extra to make some burp cloths with. And that is a really fun project. So we've got the length. Most likely this is around 45 inches. Before I cut the width of this side of the fabric, I'm going to mark, see this is the salvaged edge. I'm going to bring the safety pin in a little bit and mark it so I can make sure that I remember which is the salvaged edge. Because once I cut this, it's gonna be hard to tell which was the salvaged edge. And then I'll be able to correspond that with the other color of fabric and make sure the grain of the fabrics are all going the same way. That'll make a difference when you wash it so it all just kind of doesn't get twisted. And so that'll make sense a little bit later. To make sure the fabric is straight, I'm going to fold it in half. So I have my salvaged edges lined up. Then I'm going to fold it in half in the center of the fabric and bring those edges to the edges of the fold and smooth it out from that point. Lining up the edges. Now if I fold this over, those are pretty even. Let's see about the other side. See how it's off just a little bit? We want to make sure that that is totally straight. So I'm going to flip it over, line it up again, and smooth out. And then I will straighten that edge. All right. Now I'm going to fold it in half this way, line up the edges, and I'm going to measure from the fold out half of the 40 that I need, which will be, so I'm going to measure 20 inches. and cut it. And I know which edge is the salvage edge because I have the safety pin in there. Let's do the same thing with the front piece. So as you can see, this is not straight and the edges aren't straight. You'll know if it's twisted or not. It won't lay really flat. They'll be like this edge will just kind of be like contort. Let me just show you what it will look like if these were, if this was off just a little bit, if this was off. See how it's, see how it's kind of twist. It won't lay flat this this edge is kind of it's just kind of funny so you kind of shift it and it usually won't be off too much so you can kind of as you hang it you can kind of see the fold fall in fall straight or not and if you really wanted to get technical about it you could take the edge of your fabric and where this is a woven fabric, you could pull, see how I pull that? And so it's cut crooked because I can't get it to go straight. You, you'd pull that and then, then you would cut. See how that's crooked? So if you really want, you, that's another way to get a straight edge. What you do is come to the center or the place or the where the fabric's the shortest and pull off a little piece of the threads in the in the fabric. See how if I pull it? 
you can see how these threads are longer and then you can just take your scissors or your rotary cutter and cut it and get a really good straight edge but I'm just gonna go with this technique lining up the, the salvages and smoothing it out So on this, the front piece, I'm just going to cut off the salvaged edge. That'll give me some more fabric left over. So this was the salvaged edge, and to remember that, I'm going to put my safety pin. Otherwise, there's just really no way to tell. So that's my salvaged edge, and then I'm going to measure the width. have this extra to use for other projects. So now I have my front piece, the salvage edge marked with the pin, and my back piece marked with the salvage edge marked with the pin. So let's take the back piece and fold it in half and mark the halfway point with a pin putting the pin in right there. Do that for each side. Set that aside and we'll do that with our front piece as well. facing up and let's hit find our salvaged edge our safety pin there it is and we're going to place it right side facing down line up your center points remove one of the pins and then pin in place keeping that marked so as you can see this piece, the top piece, is a lot smaller, five inches on each side. And you're wondering, how is that all going to work out? But it does, and it's the coolest thing. So, finding the center point of this side, remove one pin, and then pin in place. Still marking the center points. So the next thing we're going to do is mark the stopping points at each corner, the quarter inch stopping points. And how to do that, we're gonna just take, measure in a quarter inch and mark that with the pencil. So just marking that point. Where that is the stopping points where we're, we're going to sew to that point and not any further. And mark that, just the the front piece. And we're going to mark it on the back of the fabric so no worries about it showing. So 
So the next step is to, to sew it together. Instead of sewing just straight from edge to edge, we're going to start from the center point, back stitch, line up your edges, and sew to the stopping point. You know, make sure that we don't sew any further down than this stopping point. So when we're sewing from this edge to this edge, I'm going to put a pin in the quarter inch at the quarter inch stopping point so that I can see it from the other side of the fabric. So I'm going to sew down to this second pin that I want to stop right there. And then when I flip it over to sew from the center, you can just sew down to the pencil line. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to sew from the center point that we have marked with a pin down to the corner and just before the, the, the stop point that we marked with our pencil. Back stitch at this front and the end of your seam. Line up your edges. Slow down and back stitch. We sew down to that quarter point. Now we're going to flip it over and we've marked where to stop with the pin. I'm going to flip it over and do the, the side directly across from it. So when you go to sew this other edge, this is what it's going to look like. So line up your edges and then you'll have this little, this little tab here, this little wing of extra fabric. And this is what it, this is what it will look like. But just take your fabric, line up the end, and pin that in place and you're gonna sew right to the corner and that will come right a butt up against that on the last side that you're sewing together you need to leave about a six inch gap so that you can turn it inside out and I'm just going to measure about six inches down from the center point and mark it with a pin it doesn't have to be exact so you're leaving about that space that much space and we'll sew from this point, not the center point, we're going to sew from this point to the stopping point on that last side. And then I'll sew, just like we did before, from the center point down all the way to the stopping point. Again, marking your place that quarter inch stopping point with a pin so that you don't sew past that. So I'm going to go to this machine. Instead of starting from the center point, I'm going to start from this point, leaving this section open. Quarter inch seam allowance, back stitch. Just take a second to line up your edges. that down and start to slow down remove your pin and just manually go up to that point that other seam and back stitch so that's what it'll look like you'll look you'll get that right to the corner 
and we'll bring it over to the table and I'll show you what we'll do next. So on that last side I sewed together, I left that space right there open so that we can turn it inside out. Now let's do our corners, our mitered corners. And to do that, fold the front piece in towards each other so the seams are lined up and it'll make a nice point with that extra, the backing piece. So we're just going to line the edges up, make sure we have a nice fold. This is the folded edge, this is the seam edge. Really important here that we mark this correctly, we are going to make, draw a line from here. But to make sure that we're getting a straight right angle, you can take a piece of cardstock or just a piece of paper. I'm just going to demonstrate with a piece of paper here so you can see what's going on here. So I'm lining up the edge of a piece of paper with the folded edge and I'm going to drag it down till it is right at the edge of the seam line. And that is where I would draw the line. But I'm going to use a ruler and this ruler has a line on the this ruler this has lines on it so that I can get you don't want to be crooked like this you want this line to be lined up with the folded edge slide it down till it's just to the point of that seam make sure it's straight and then we're going to draw a line with a pencil you won't see this because it's on the wrong side of the fabric. And then we ha so we have this line. We'll take it to the sewing machine, backstitch, and sew down here, and then backstitch there. So what you don't want to do is measure and line up with the cut edge, the seam edge, and then mark and draw a line here. You want to make sure that you're drawing the line and lining up that place so that you have a perpendicular corner and edge there. So I hope that makes sense. Really important to do that. So we'll do that with all of the corners. Lining up the edges. Make sure that's nice and flat. Take your ruler, line the line up or your or your pieces of or your piece of paper. Slide it to the edge of that seam and draw your line. I'm just going to pin that. Go to the next corner. Fold your edges together so that's a nice point. You don't want to make it. I want you to make sure that the it's right at that. It's making a point. Make sure your edges are even. This is nice and flat. You can remove your pin. It's going to sew from that stopping point down to the edge. So just put your needle in, make sure you're at the edge of the point where you want to be. So straight down that line. Back stitch. Do that for each corner. Now that we've got all the miter corners sewn, take your scissors and trim that seam down to a quarter of an inch. Just cutting off that piece. So 
before you turn it inside out, we are going to take it to the ironing board. So bring the, the front piece to the front and pull it open. and press the seams towards the outside. So we don't want the seams coming in, we're gonna press the seam towards the outside. And I like to take the center point and just kind of pull it so it's even. And you can take this, the very point, and just clip that. Being careful not to clip the seam, just cut that at a, at a corner right there. And we can pull that, iron that open if you want to. It creates less bulk. So opening up that seam with your finger and then we'll use it with the iron. We have that corner point. I'm just going to press it. Give it a little steam. It's going to work ourselves around the whole edge of the blanket. Take your corner. Flip the Open it up. Just finger press that open. And then hit it with the iron. And again, these seams pressing out. So now you can see that that's the, the, op the place that we left open and we'll press that when we flip it inside out. But just take that corner and make sure that that's laying flat. Clip your little seam. Okay, now we get to turn it inside out. Find that opening and just bring all that inside out. Good shake. And this is where the fun is. You can take a point of your scissors if they're not real pointy and use that to poke out the corners. Or use a, the end of a pencil that's coming out pretty good, which is my fingers. Go to each corner and poke out the corner. You 
can get rid of the safety pins now. So now that we've pre-ironed the, the seam allowance to the inside, it makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, it would be a little tricky to sit there and fold that. It makes it a lot quicker and easier. So take your hands and just smooth it out, and then we're going to give it a good nice, a good nice press with the iron. There you have it. Isn't that the coolest thing? We're not quite finished. We're going to top stitch and then close that opening up. So just go around the edges, moving it out, and then giving it a press. So this is the edge where we left the opening. I'm going to press up to that point. And then see how there it's just kind of open and the edges are showing, the raw edges are still showing. I'm just going to press the top and then just going to fold that section underneath, tuck it underneath. And it'll be a quarter of an inch. I'm going to pin it in place. Pin it in place. So now you're ready to top stitch. We're going to be stitching on the, the outside binding fabric, just inside the seam there. You can use a decorative stitch to go all the way around, or you can just use a straight stitch. That's up to you. So go to the machine now and top stitch. So I'm just going to sew just barely on the inside of the seam. the corner point. Just leave your needle in. Lift up your presser foot and pivot. stitch at the end. Lift your threads. So there you have it. We've sewn all the way around. I'm just going to do a final press. Just all the way around and in the middle. you wanted to add a cute tag or label you can do that in the seam as you as you um, are top stitching a good place to do put the tag in would be the place where you left an opening so you have the opening so that the tag can just fit underneath there just kind of look on the other side where there might have been some wrinkles in the fabric on this side or that that natural crease that comes with when you're on the bolt. Fold those up and I can't wait to make more. I have some already fun pieces to put together a few more of these quilts. These make such fun gifts. Roll them 
them up, put a cute ribbon around them. 